Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. It's 2023. Happy New Year to everyone. It's the first video of 23 for me, and I want to thank you all for stopping by. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel, and can you take another second and hit that like button? I'd really appreciate it. I want you all to have a healthy and happy year, okay, in 23, okay? And part of that is staying sober one day at a time, isn't it? Our sobriety is really important to us. It's not easy at times, but it is important, right? It really is. What this video is about today is actually a request from a, uh, a longtime viewer of my channel. His name is Paul. At the time, he had 118 days of contentive sobriety. I hope contentive sobriety, but still pretty young, so he's probably working really hard at it. But he asked me, Terry G, can you give me your views on step six and seven of Alcoholics Anonymous? And I'm gonna read you the steps just for starters for we don't, we don't get it right, wrong, right? So step six is we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. That's step six. And step seven, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. It's really hard to talk about step seven without step six, right? They kind of blend together. You can't talk about step six without talking about step seven. They do blend together. It's like four and five. It's really, they're really hard to talk about separately. But I just want to start off with by saying, I found my character defects in my fourth step. I did all my step work basically the, the old fashioned way, the big book way. A lot of people do it differently, the step four and five in their step work with all these worksheets. But it doesn't matter the way you do it. All what matters is that you do it, that you do it. My step four and five and six and seven were done exactly out of the big book. And that way as we connect our, we find our defects of character by examining our fourth step and relating them to one of the daily sins, okay? My character defects are, were, well, I shouldn't say were, are still, jealousy, greed, anger, big time, anger was number one, and procrastination, laziness, sloth. When it came to myself, I was very lazy. When it came to self-improvement in the program, I was very lazy, helping myself. I had the knowledge of what to do, but I wouldn't apply it to my own life. And a lot of us are like that, right? So procrastination, when it came to myself, looking after myself, doing things for myself, that was one of them, character defect. That was a big one. Anger was gigantic. Anger caused me a lot of difficulties in sobriety, and it continues, not so much nowadays, but I really have to watch it when it comes to anger. A lot of guys have problems with anger, and I'm not, you know, I do too. I have to keep tabs on it, keep my mouth shut, walk away from situations, but it's definitely a character defect. Jealousy, for sure. Jealousy of other people, what they had, uh, how they handled their lives. They had a better looking girlfriend or a nice house or a bigger car. I was very jealous of that. And greed, I was very greedy, not just in money, but in my time, in my efforts helping other people, I was very greedy. I became a hoarder, basically, when it came to money. I became like that, kept all my money, and I never really made a lot of money in my life. I make pretty good money now because I'm a city bus driver, but I've never really made a lot of money, but I was very greedy. You know, I'd go out on dates and I'd be counting how much money she spent, how much money I spent, or what people gave me for Christmas presents, you know, would, would value how they valued me. I know it's, it's kind of insane, right? But it's those deep thoughts and those deep feelings that we feel about things that really are connected to our character defects. So they were my character defects. The shortcoming, well, let's not, let's not get there yet, okay? I just want to explain something first, okay? A lot of people in 12-step programs get hung up on those two words, defect and shortcoming, okay? And they don't really understand what they, they are. Both a defect and a shortcoming are a flaw of character. They are characters or behaviors we developed over our drinking or maybe you know, before our drinking that helped us cope with our lives. You know, I was greedy when I drank because I had no money. So I always had to be greedy. I was angry because I pushed people away. I did things 
in my drinking time and prior to drinking that helped me cope with my life. You know, and that's basically what a character defect is. We, we inherit these defects throughout our lives, but what happens with these defects, they stop working for us when we're adults or when we, we get into sobriety. They stop, they stop working for us, but we still have it. We still have those habits that come with the defect. The shortcoming is a flaw, but it's a behavior. It's an outcome of the defect. Okay, it's kind of like this. The defect is your brakes in your car. You know, you're driving down the road and you have brake issues with your car, okay? No one can see the defect in your car. No one can see the defect in me of anger. If I walk down the street, no one can see the defect inside me of anger, but I know I have it. And the same like driving a car. No one can see the defect of the brakes. We can't see the brakes, right? But we can see the shortcoming of the brake, the behavior of bad brakes in your car. Maybe you run a red light and smash into a car because your brakes are bad. Or maybe somebody can hear it, you know, especially in anger, they can hear your brakes squeaking. It's like me, they can hear me yelling when I'm angry. They can't see the defect, but they can see the shortcoming. So the defect is inside us, they can't see it, and the shortcoming is the behavior connected to that defect. So what we have to do is understand our defect and ask God to help us remove it from us and help us with our shortcomings. Anger, right? Shortcoming of anger would be anger outbursts, rage, maybe fist fighting, uh, yelling at people, that kind of stuff. What would be uh, to get rid of my shortcomings would be keep my mouth shut, right? Keep more of an open mind to people. Ask God for love and tolerance. Ask God for the power of not getting upset over little things in life, not getting mad about things. That would be the opposite of the shortcoming, right? Greed. What is the opposite of greed? Well, charity, right? Charity and helping other people out. So when I feel greedy, maybe I donate a little bit of money or maybe I pay for dinner or maybe when I go on that date or I go out somewhere with my wife or something, I don't keep track of the money. I just understand that God will let go of it. God will help me let go of that situation and know that I will be looked after as long as I stay sober and do the right things in my life. Because I used to argue with people about paying the bill and I used to argue with my wife about who's paying for the gas today. Yeah, really, I used to do that. So now I just put the gas in, zip it up and drive, and it's amazing how things just seem to work out like that. But the, the defect needs to be addressed, it needs to be acknowledged before we can work on the shortcomings. And basically, that's what it is. And jealousy of people, right, feeling jealousy, you know, bubbles up anger, bubbles up envy, all that kind of negative stuff. Gossip, right? Uh, works on my self-worth because I'm comparing myself to other people when I'm jealous of them, what they have, maybe a better car or a house. The other thing, the other thing I could do, my shortcoming would be maybe I'm not their friend, maybe I'm gossiping about them, right? That's the shortcoming of it. So what is it? Keep an open mind. Understand that those people work for it. They're not an alcoholic like me and spending all my money and all these kind of problems I've had in my life when it came to financial things. So maybe they should have their nice house and their nice car, great job. You know, I was drinking, I didn't go to school. I went to the school of alcoholism, right? So just understanding what is going on with me, I can intercept the shortcoming and live at peace with myself and not act out, not act out. So. I don't know if this helps you, but it sure helps me, right? It sure helps me. Just remember, we have to be brutally honest with ourselves and bring to the forefront these defects and understand the shortcomings. Because like I said, these two steps are not really explained that well in the big book. I think there are only two, three paragraphs at max. But when it comes to character building, they can have great, great positive, 
influences on our sobriety. To be honest with you, a lot of us do get hung up on character defects and shortcomings. They're both the same. They're both flaws of character. Just one, like I said, is inside of us. We can't see it. It's the character defect. And the other one is the behavior, the result of the character defect. It doesn't necessarily have to be a behavior. It can be the way we think and the way we feel about things that bring us down or ruin our day, okay? They're the result of the character defect. But the nice thing about it is, is that they don't, well, I shouldn't say they don't go away. They really subside in life. They really calm down in life, but they're always there. But do they disappear? I think sometimes greed has disappeared and jealousy has disappeared, those character defects, but anger is still there. And I have to keep a, a eye on procrastination get off my butt and do things for myself that are very positive for character building and working on my defects. I really have to keep an eye on that. You know, it's when I let down my guard and I think I have it made that they come back and they rear their, their ugly head out there. Okay, so six and seven, good steps. Good steps. I always believe in sobriety is to keep things very, very simple in it. Try not to complicate your life. Try not to complicate the steps. They are very simple, but they're difficult to do. Steps six and seven take a lot of discipline and a lot of determination, but they take knowledge too, right? We have to know what our character defects are. I know people in the program that I don't think know have done a proper four and five or a six and seven. They're very, very good and they're very important to do. Your life, when come the six and seven, should and more likely will if you work in those steps the way you should be working them will start improving and you'll see it in yourself and the people around you in your circle of life will see that hey terry g is getting a little better at life he's not so angry anymore because that's how i've been working on my character defects he's a little more tolerant when it comes to money wow i've been working on my shortcomings those kind of things so i'm just repeating myself now but i hope this answered a few questions for you paul and I know you have more than 118 days of sobriety today. I'm glad you're on my channel. I'm glad you're doing well. And I wish you and all the people on YouTube a happy and safe and healthy 2013. And don't forget, sobriety is easier when we ask for help and we get people behind us supporting us one day at a time. No one in sobriety is an island. No one in recovery can do it by themselves. And if you think you can, you'll be white knuckling it, won't you? You'll be white knuckling, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a second, please subscribe. If you could take another second, please hit that like button, okay? But remember, one day at a time, one day at a time. Stay safe, stay sober and i'll see you next week ciao for now over and out